Hey, it's Michelle. It's Kelly. Welcome back to our channel. Um, if you're new, subscribe and be sure to follow all our social media. It's listed in the description box. Um, get caught up on our Vlogmas videos if you never did. Vlogmas, of course, is now over because Christmas is over. That's kind of sad. Yeah. But we it's filmed a bunch of days in December. Um, we did a Christmas Eve vlog. We filmed a bunch of stuff. Um, we have some good content. So you should yeah, go watch that. Watch those, go watch them. You also have a Christmas haul that we got for Christmas video. You should watch that. And YouTube turned our freaking comments off on the video again. I don't know why YouTube is doing this. Like, they're just doing it randomly. Yeah, they've done it twice now in like the past month. That's super irritating. <laughs> There's nothing we can really do about it. I don't know why they're doing it. Yeah, I don't know. So who knows if the comments will be on <coughs> on this video or not? Yeah. Who knows? Hopefully. Hopefully they will be. I don't know what's setting them all. But they're turning the comments off on some, but not the others. Yeah. But for today's video, we're going to be doing... Um, how to travel on a budget, how to travel cheaper, and how to like make the most of your money while traveling. Yeah, so I think we're probably going to call this video like tips for traveling on a budget or how to travel on a budget. Yeah. Because a question that we've gotten countless times like over the years doing um, YouTube videos, like a question that we've gotten like DMs, messages, comments, like things, people always say like, you must have a lot of money. Your family must have a lot of money. That's why you travel a lot, right? People yeah. assume that. And I mean, that is easy to assume because like, a lot of times that's what I assume all the time. If you go to somebody's Instagram or something, they have like a bunch of really cool pictures from like all these different places. Like you kind of just assume that. But that's definitely not true for us. So we wanted to share how we travel on a budget because we always are on a budget we are traveling and yeah and we make it work so that's why we wanted yeah. to share some of these tips some of these things might be basic you might already know these some might not be so um <coughs> we just wrote a list of some stuff we want to talk about we're just gonna get started. Oh wait, just keeps knocking the camera on when you do that. What? You to be careful. It's like yeah. shaking the camera, yeah. Okay. And I think this is a good video to get started with the new year here because if you want to travel more this year or something, maybe some of these tips can inspire you to start traveling more. Yeah, Rather we you... have several trips planned. I don't guess we're gonna say them yet. I don't know. We already we probably about... always find that weird. Like to say we're going. No, we talk about Chicago. What? I said we can talk about Chicago. Yeah. We already said something about that one. Yeah, we're going to Chicago in March. Yeah, hopefully, unless something changes, which I really hope it doesn't, because I want to go to Chicago so bad. I've been wanting to go somewhere like Chicago or New York City, because we've never been, like, either one of those places. Like, iconic big cities like that, so... Um, if you've ever been to Chicago, what was your favorite thing you did there? What's something that we should do when we go there? Well, Comment if you can. Can we vlog that? Yeah, I love you vlog. I'm gonna vlog Chicago. So, <coughs> yeah, let's get started with some of the tips. So, first thing oh, and to talk what? We, can, we always interrupt each other. This is the problem with filming a video with, some, with somebody else. Um, we're probably going to Nashville on um, next next weekend or this weekend, and um. You gonna vlog that? Should we vlog it? Yeah, we could. Yeah, we might vlog that. Yeah, we're just taking like a day trip. Which is something we're gonna talk more about in this to video. Nashville. So let's get started. So the first like um category is food <laughs> and how to like keep your food with like a good budget. So. What we usually <coughs> do, and I think this is a good tip, is not to eat out every meal because that can get really expensive. So have food with you that you can make like in the car. When we're like in the car, like on longer road trips, we usually just eat like sandwiches and stuff. Yeah, we eat sandwiches. Or like if we if, are at a hotel, we'll get like a just TV dinner or something. Yeah, like an so inexpensive TV most dinner. Most hotels have microwaves. We usually just get a TV dinner and eat that over in the car. We eat 
like sandwiches, you can stop at like rest stops and eat stuff like that or in your hotel. <laughs> and um, it's a little bit hard to do that because like I love to eat out. It is one of the fun parts of going on trips for me is eating out or going to a restaurant or something like that. You just have to like pick like what we try to do most of the time is like get one meal out a day like if we get breakfast then we got breakfast if we get lunch we usually try to pick um one thing for the day that we want to spend more money on yeah sometimes you like have to get more food out yeah that sometimes you, don't have you do a choice but for the most part if you can plan to do that only eat out one meal a day that's the best thing to yeah. do especially on longer trips it money. helps if it's a shorter trip it may not matter but a longer trip is going to add up like getting food every day and you probably won't be able to do that so yeah yeah next is finding free activities to do and not is... not paying for every activity because and this is actually pretty easy i think to do we honestly don't pay for that many like activities or tours on trips <coughs> only occasionally really for example this summer our two-week road trip we went on we literally probably only paid for well the only thing that we paid for on that trip we paid for national parks like um the Badlands, we paid for that. And, and then, then we, we paid... went to the North Cascades National Park. It, the park itself was free, but we paid for the boat yeah. to get there. We went, sorry, the piece of hair is on. And that was pretty expensive. Yeah. That we was like $200, yeah, to but. The heat, yeah. But yeah, I think those were the only activities we paid for, I think. Like Everything in a else, whole two weeks. So. Yeah. Everything else, other places that like we looked around, we took pictures, were free. So, even yeah. some national parks are free. There is some national parks that are free, and there is plenty of different like things to do that that are free, like on trips. And like when we went to Savannah and Charleston, we didn't do like any of the tours that you can do. We just walked around, which you can see everything just from walking around, like the historical. You're really not really missing out on anything. And parks and everything. <laughs> it's not necessary to do all the tours. You really can see the same stuff just walking around or driving around yourself. And we went to the lighthouse, the Tybee Island lighthouse, and actually we didn't pay to like get in. Like it was kind of expensive to get in, but like you can see it without paying, like go up the lighthouse. We just stood around it, looked at it, and took some pictures. And we got to see it all the same, so yeah, and you can save a lot of money that way, like just doing free activities. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like scenic like drives and stuff you can do, um, and those are free, so yeah. Next is to use travel websites. We um, usually always book our hotels through booking.com or sometimes like Expedia. And if you use those websites a lot, you are like a member and you get discounts. We yes. get discounts on booking.com. <coughs> you become like what they call a frequent traveler and like you get the rewards points. And so you always get a discount on the hotels. And they're usually already discounted anyway, like on booking. Yeah, they're usually always cheaper on there and then you get an extra discount. So Yeah, so always check the different travel websites. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Um, and kind of, okay, going on to the next thing, I guess, is cheaper hotels. And some people, like, I know of a lot of people who don't want to travel if they can't stay at, like, the fancy resort or something like that. That's not what we do. I mean, rarely we stay at, like, a really nice place. Like, in Palm Springs, we stay at a nice, a really nice, um, resort-like hotel. And sometimes we will, like, in Florida or something. But for the a lot of times, we do find cheaper, like budget type yeah, of hotels and hotels. Especially if you're on a longer <laughs> road trip and like maybe you're staying in a nicer place at like your destination, destination. But like along the way, if you're staying like two or three nights just to get there, you don't need to book expensive places because you're, you're not even going to be there that much. You're basically just sleeping there for a few hours and then leaving. So we usually just stay in places like like a Motel Six or like places like that. Yeah, there's a lot of those different like ones. The only thing is just like make sure that, like it's safe. That's the only yeah. thing that's like the line. I do get kind of 
I'm worried about some hotels sometimes. I don't like to stay at ones that are like, you know, so cheap that they're like dangerous. Obviously, that's not a very smart thing to do. Yeah. Read reviews. There are still cheaper ones that aren't safe. Right. Read like some reviews and stuff. Um, well, like get an idea if you think it's a safe place to stay. Yeah, or like look at the score. Like we usually stay at <laughs> ones like or like a seven. And we usually score. never stay in any that have like a five out of ten review because that's pretty bad. So yeah, kind of pick like a limit, like seven and up. Because usually that would probably mean they're safe. Because people wouldn't have gave it that score if it was like in a really bad part of like town or something. Yeah. Also, if, um, usually hotels are cheaper during the week. So I, you could plan like to get to like your actual destination, stay there during the week instead of the weekend. We do that a lot because it's usually cheaper. Another thing that we didn't write down on our list here, but I was going to mention because I just now thought of it is like to travel during like the off season for places like for example um Destin is one of our Destin Florida <coughs> one of our favorite places to go we go there every year since like forever and um the thing about there is it can get kind of expensive like some of the hotels they're like in the middle of the summer our cat is knocking our stuff over we usually go in May, like right before the prices go up more. Because that's before the, people get out of school summer. and off of work for summer and stuff. So, like, they have not raised up their prices yet. It's not like the peak time, like the 4th of July or something. So, like, a place like the beach, yeah, try to go a little bit early. Like, either like, like in May. In September <laughs> or May, something and like that. It's still warm enough to swim in May or September. So you can go pick which which one you want to go with and kind of go yeah, we went in to the beach in October too. Yeah, and it's just the same as going in the summer really. If you go in October, like early October is really fine. So yeah, that's another tip. Next thing we want to talk about is um, taking day trips or just kind of smaller trips if you're like just like starting to like get into traveling <laughs> that's kind of what we so, did like five to six years ago when we first started um really being passionate about traveling and trying to travel more that's how we started with smaller or like day trips and we still we do, still day do trips. a lot of trips like that um like so we just said sure we're that... going to nashville this weekend and that that is a day trip so so I'm sure that wherever you live, like there's probably um, several places like two to three hours away that would make fun day trips. That's usually like that's like a comfortable amount to drive like for a day trip. Um, you know, so we go to like Atlanta, Nashville, Chattanooga, places like that. Also other cities in Alabama, like Huntsville, for day trips. So yeah, anywhere you live, there's probably several places you could go for a day trip and they don't cost that much. So if you're wanting to like get into traveling or do something that's kind of more like adventurous or fun, that is a good thing to do. Yeah, and like she said, even other things like in your state can be fun. That's not really traveling, but like just other cities in your state for a day trip, that can be fun too. Because we do that a lot. Yeah. So, and also, don't like get discouraged if like you can't afford to like go the place. It's like your dream place to go. Like save save up your money anyway, and then like go where you can go with the money. Go like as far as you can go, and don't get discouraged about the other thing because it will yeah. happen one day. Until then, you should take smaller trips, too. Mm -hmm. So, the last thing we want to talk about is just kind of, like, saving up and, like, kind of what we do. <coughs> so, um, we, we usually, we save up for months to go on a trip. Usually it takes between a while for us to save up, usually, like, three to four months. Yeah, three to four months, really. Yeah, um, and we have, we pick, like, put up money instead of doing other things, you have to make sacrifices, 
a lot of towns and choose to put money up for traveling instead of doing other things. Sometimes it's hard, like if someone asks you to go to a movie or go eat out or something and you say no, but um, sometimes it's like you have to do if you want to save that money for a trip. And if you're really passionate about it, dedicated to it, and you really like want to travel, then it'll be worth it in the end. It is sad sometimes when you have to like pass on certain opportunities along the way because you're saving for a trip, but it's usually always worth it in the end. I've never regretted saving for a trip or anything. Yeah, so I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that is all. <coughs> I hope that these ideas help you or even if not, maybe just inspired you to travel more because traveling is really rewarding and I would encourage everyone to try to travel more. Yeah. yeah. So, do you have any traveling plans for the new year? Sorry, I put the camera again. Comment those down below, whether it's like a big trip or just a day trip or anything. Comment below what your plans are for 2020. And like I said, if you've ever been to Chicago, um, comment if the comments aren't turned off. and. What was your favorite thing you did there, or what's something you would recommend us doing when we go there? Because we're probably going at the end of March, so trying to, to get up some recommendations and things to not miss out on when we go to Chicago. Yeah, we might do a video when we get back saying like things to do, like top 10 things to do. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.